Hello everyone, here we are again, ready for some more InMove robot building. Last time I was working on the rotational wrist, which we can see here. I got up to the point where I was attaching the hand, but I had a little trouble with one of the bolts, which we'll be fixing today. This time I'm hoping to get the servo bed installed and all the servos installed in here, get the hand attached, get the cables run through so that the servos can start driving the fingers. That's the goal. Okay, before I start, I'm going to just quickly run through all the 3D printed parts we're going to be using. So we've got the left Rob servo bed, left Rob cable back, left Rob cable front, left tensioner, and finally servo pulley. So we left Rob's servo bed. We did briefly look at this a couple of videos ago, but I didn't actually install it. Haven't done much to it. The only thing I had to do was just file out these rectangular holes here because the front cable guide was a little bit tight to fit in there. Other than that, I haven't really done anything, given it a quick sand. So we left Rob cable back. This is just a cable guide for the servos at the rear of the forearm. Again, just giving it a quick sand down. Um, I have run through all the holes. There's two in each end, and they run through at angles. I have run drill through there. 3mm drill just to clear out the, some of the plastic that's inside the holes. Then we have left Rob cable front. This again is a cable guide for the servos at the front of the forearm. Again just run a drill through all the holes just to clear out the plastic. I did have to file down these um, lugs here. As I said before, they're a bit tight to fit into the servo bed, so a little bit of filing here, a little bit of filing on the servo bed until they just fit in. Left tensioner. Now I've included it here for completeness, but I probably won't be using this at the moment. I'll probably come back to the forearm sometime in the future and fit the springs that, that attach onto these tensioners. I don't have any springs at the moment, so we won't really be doing much with this for now. I will come back and look at it later at some point. And then finally we've got the servo pulley times five. You get five of these um, in the STL file so one single print gives you five servo pulleys. I've actually printed ten because uh, these are these are one of the only parts that are the same on both arms. They're not handed left or right so I just printed ten out save me a bit of time when I come to the next arm. Um, I did just file around the outside just to completely remove the brim. Um, a quick file and sand on the top and, and a quick sand around the edges just to make everything smooth. So that's all the parts we'll be using today. So there's going to be uh, three main areas to work on this time. Um, I'm going to be coming back to the hand, just revisiting these fingers. Um, some of them are very loose and others are still a little bit tight. So what I'm going to be doing is removing all of the pins and just re-drilling some of the holes out to 3.2 millimeters because they're only drilled out to three millimeters at the moment and they're a little bit tight still. We want them to be nice and loose for when the servos are driving them. So there's going to be quite a bit of time just dismantling all the fingers, drilling them out and reassembling the fingers. I need to sort out this bolt that, that I mentioned before. The head is still a little bit proud so I need to take this bolt out, shave a little bit off the end, put the bolt back in. So the first stage is just going to be kind of rebuilding the hand, just slightly improving some of the joints and the bolt on the hand. 
then the next part of the build will be putting together this um, servo holder, installing all the servos into the holder, getting the cable guides on, tensioner screwed on, and then getting that whole assembly installed inside the forearm. So the final part of the build will be writing a small Arduino sketch so we could just uh, get some control going on with the fingers. That'll just be probably an automated loop just repeating over the same movements again and again so we don't have any inputs on this yet so we can't um, send it any commands or anything so we just want to test out that each finger does move correctly and get the extents of the fingers set up that's the maximum distance that they can move from open to closed so three main parts rebuild the hand build the servo bed and write the software So I've just shortened this bolt a little bit. So I was just a little bit uh, proud at the end. So I'm about halfway through all these joints now. I'm going to redo them all. Um, just to show you the difference, uh, you can see this little one here is... He's just uh, nice and loose and he'll fall back down by itself. These are all the, the joints on that finger now. A little hard to show you, but they're all nice and loose. Whereas this one here, which I haven't redone yet, is, is just really tight. won't fall back by itself. I have actually threaded um, all the tendons through all of these once and they just didn't work. Um, and I think it's just simply because they're too tight here. So I'll carry on and, and get them all done. I'm leaving the filaments uh, long for now just in case I want to pull them out again. But I think actually I'm going to be okay now. So I've uh, redone them all apart from three joints. Uh, these two here I left and this one here I left. Um, I think they're all good enough. So that's sort of nice and loose now. All the fingers uh, just return them back on their own under their own weight. The exception is the thumb. That doesn't really seem to be, you can see it's not falling back under its own weight. So even though it is quite loose, I think that's still not quite good enough, that thumb. So uh, I think I'll have to redo these two joints. I think what's making the biggest difference is just drilling through these holes and and these holes. Uh, I'm, I'm not re-drilling out these ones because we want those ones to be tight. Uh, it's these centre ones that need to be loose, and that seems to be making the biggest difference. There, so I've redone the thumb as well. Um, that's now returning back under its own weight as well. So, he says, as it doesn't. It's still a little tight, but... I think it's just sticking right at the end. I think that'll be good enough now. I'm a little bit, bit disappointed that I had to redo all that because um, it's messed up the paint quite a bit. Um, I wouldn't recommend uh, painting the parts. So this turned out to be a nightmare. Um, the reason I did it was because the prints were coming out so rough. But now I've got a better printer, I think uh, I'd probably be better off reprinting the whole hand. It's just that is quite time consuming. I didn't really want to waste all the work done so far. Um, I probably will at some point replace this hand. Um, but I won't be painting the other side. I think what I'm going to try and do is focus more on the functionality rather than the looks. Uh, just get it working first and then if we get a working robot then maybe I'll consider 
dismantling it and repainting the parts and reassembling it. I think it would look quite nice painted, but it's a lot of work. So let's take a look at this servo bed. We have a cable guide at the front and a cable guide at the rear. I say the rear, it actually fits in the middle because it guides the cables into the rear servo and the front one with the front one guiding the cables into the front servos. This one's obvious how it fits. It's got these square plastic lugs and they fit into these square holes at this end, so that's straightforward. This one's not quite so obvious because it can it can screw on this way or this way. And there's obviously a right and a wrong way of doing that. If you look at the holes on the ends, they actually run through at an angle. They don't run straight through the part. So I believe we need to install it so the cables run inwards towards the back. So we want those uh, holes running through at an angle pointing inwards. If we'd fitted it this way round, then they would be pointing outwards, which would be guiding them away from the servos. We want it to guide towards the servos. So when you think about it, that is fairly obvious how that fits in there. There's just one screw in there to attach that. This pushes in here. I just realised I've actually got this back to front. So this pushes in here. As I've turned it around now, that is also back to front. There's one screw hole in here at the bottom and there's a hole in the cable tensioner so all three parts just screw together one single screw through there holds all three parts together now when I first printed this part out I thought that the base was quite thin I wasn't quite sure why it was designed that way because it actually flexes and bends uh, but now when I come to look at installing the servos we again have this problem with the, the cable sticking out and the width of the bed to fit them down the, the cable gets in the way again and that's where the flexing actually helps us because there's a bit of give in there so we can get the servos in quite easily but then thinking about it once you've screwed one servo in you no longer have that flexing so it's probably best to get all the servos installed in before we start actually fitting the screws the other thing I was thinking about was do I install the servo bed into the forearm first and then fit all the servos inside or do I fit the servos onto the bed and then put the bed into the arm as one complete piece. One thing to consider thinking about that is there's, a, there's two fixing holes in this bed. There's one here and one here and this middle servo here covers up this hole. This one's always clear, even with the servos installed, but this one will be covered up. So we will have to fit the bed into the forearm and put the screw in before we can install the final servo in here. Okay, I'll just show you in here, because this, this was a little tricky to get in here. There's a couple of locating lugs here and here. So I just had to file out the holes just to clear them because this wasn't actually sitting fully flat down. It should be okay now. Okay, now the next problem I'm having is I was trying to install the servo in this position and it didn't seem to be sitting flat down on the bottom. And I couldn't really see what was under it. Um, now I've taken it out, it's quite clear. There's a there's a piece of plastic running along here. And that's slightly proud, that's slightly higher than the servo bed. And the servo sits on top of that. Uh, possibly might have the same problem here with this piece. So I'm going to have to take the bed out again and try and grind that that piece down. It might be quite tricky to get in there. I'm going to try and get in there with the Dremel, but 
It's going to be a bit awkward, I think. Okay, I've ground that down with the Dremel. I think that's enough. I've got these two servos just loosely fitted in there. Uh, it's a little awkward to get the cables through on this one. Um, I'm not sure if they're supposed to come out here, but for now I've just taken the cables out of this square hole. I'll probably reroute them in the future. I think we might be fitting some sort of board down in here and running the cables through this way so the plugs all plug in in this area. But just for now I've run them out the back um, so we can just connect them up to our Arduino. I'm about to put the third one in, in the centre here. And this one actually runs, the cable runs forwards. So this servo is actually the other way round with the horn towards the front as opposed to these with the horn towards the back. So I'll just pop that one in. And then these last two at the sides here, the, the cable runs through. There's a little hole running through there. The cable just runs through like that. So I've got all the cables running out through the back. Um, the only one that didn't reach was the one that's up in the wrist. Yeah, it would have just almost just reached out the back, but rather than having it pulled tight, I've put an extension lead on it. I've run it under here and through to this side. Um, I've just put an extension lead in there. So the one running out the back with a different colour cable is the wrist. So I've now got all the screws fitted in so all the servos are attached. I couldn't use the original screws that came with the servos because they were too thin for the holes that were in the plastic of the servo holder. So I had to use these number four by three quarter inch screws. So the last thing to do then is to attach the servo horns and the servo pulleys. So the servo horn goes in with the raised part going down into the hole like that so that we've got a, f a flat top with the splined piece for the servo on the bottom. Uh, you can see that this servo horn has four sets of three holes in straight lines. So we want to line one of those up with this notch in the bottom. Like that. And then the holes we're going to use are the centre one on the, each side, here and here, and the two outer ones on the bottom row. So drill out all four of those with a 2mm drill bit. So I drilled out the centre hole at 9.5mm, and then with the servo pulley in place, I drilled out all the holes we're using at 2mm. I'm then fitting the two screws. I'm using the screws that came with the servo. They've got a large flange on the top which will be handy for wrapping their cables around later on. And I'm putting the screws in so that they're not, not fully tightened and you can see they stick out a little bit out the other side. So with them in there not fully tightened I then file off the piece that's protruding out so that we've got that flat. It does mean when we tighten the screws they will be a little bit poking out, probably about that much again. Um, but we should have clearance for that, but we wouldn't have clearance for the, the whole length if we didn't do any filing. Now one more thing we need to do before we install the pulleys is we have to drill through the side of the pulley like this. Now that's quite delicate and I've cracked a couple of these so I'm now doing it by hand instead of using a, a power drill and I'm drilling these out with a one and a half millimeter drill bit. Um, probably would be better to use a one millimeter drill bit but I don't have one. Uh, one and a half seems okay but 
you need to do it by hand with the power drill it was just cracking the, ser the servo pulleys and then I can screw the servo pulley and servo horn onto the top of the servos using the black screw that comes with the servos so I'll just do the other four so that's all the servo horns attached now so the next job is to connect up the hand and run the cables through and attach them all up into the servos so I've threaded the braided fishing line through each finger and through the palm of the hand and left a nice uh, good metre length out the other end and I've also tied knots uh, tried double knots in each one and then I've just threaded them through the wrist so here's the Arduino sketch I've created just to help me set up the servos I'll just go over this uh, line by line very quickly the first line we have the include servo.h that's just to include the servo library so we can use its functions uh, then we have an array of servo objects that's just four servo objects in an array. So then we have our setup function, which will get executed once. We're just going to use that to set up all the servos. Um, so I'm just doing this manually. I've got servo zero attached to pin three. And then I'm uh, moving that to position zero, which is the fully clockwise position. And so with servo one, I'm attaching it to pin five and I'm setting its position to 90, which is the center position. And then with servo two, I'm attaching it to pin six and setting its position to 180 degrees, which is fully anti-clockwise. Um, finally, I've got servo three connected to pin 10 and I'm, I'm not setting its position here. I'm gonna do that later in the main loop. And we're gonna use that one just to give us the uh, full movement on the finger. So what I'll be able to do is um, just connect the servo we're trying to set up to the relevant pin and it will just move its position to where we want it. Finally in our setup function we've got pin mode 13 output. That's just the uh, onboard LED on the Arduino. Just setting that up as an output pin. We then have our main loop. There's two blocks there. And the top block we have digital write 13 high, just turn the LED on. Um, then we have um, a loop going from 0 to 180, which is the angle of the servo. Um, we're just using servo 3, which is the one that's connected to pin 10, and we're just moving its position to the current angle. We've got a delay of 10 in there, that's just 10 milliseconds, just to make things move slowly. Once we've gone through the whole movement from 0 to 180, I've then got that delay 1000, which is a one second delay. So the second block is identical, we're just going in reverse. So this time we've got digital write 13 low to turn the LED off. And then we're going backwards from 180 to 0 on the angle. And again, just with servo 3, uh, we're moving that to the current angle another delay of 10 to slow things down a little bit and then finally a one second delay so that's just gonna move um, servo number three uh, which is connected to pin 10 repeatedly it's just gonna move it from 0 to 180 and then back again from 180 back to 0 so that'll be our final movement of the finger so to set them up we'll be able to connect them to pin 3 to get the fully clockwise position or pin 6 to get the fully anti-clockwise position or pin 5 for the center position and then finally once we're happy with the setup we can connect them to pin 10 to see the full movement. To feed power into the servos I've made up this little board. Um, I got some of these um, header terminals in different colors so I already had some black ones, so I ordered some red and yellow ones. And then that should just help identify uh, which way around we connect the servo plugs. As they tend to be colored sort of like this. 
but not always. Um, sometimes I think in our hand we've got some So ours aren't coloured exactly like that, um, ours are brown, red and orange, but you can kind of work that out that the orange goes to the yellow and the brown goes to the black. These are kind of the three different variations you'll find. You'll either get orange, red and brown, or yellow, red and black, or white, red and black. But you always got kind of a dark colour to the outside. Red is always consistent, it's always red. And then you have a light colour which is the uh, signal wire, the pulse width modulation. So that should just help identify which way around we plug those on. I've put six on there so we'll be able to plug in all five fingers and one for the wrist. I'm going to bring in power here, uh, probably five volts for the fingers and wrist and I've soldered on some wires on the back uh, 5 volts will come in here and feed the middle rail and, and the ground will come in here and feed the outside rail so all I've got left to do is just connect up these six pins here to some headers on here so I can connect up to the Arduino So if I just explain what I've connected up here, we've got our battery as a power source, and then we've got a voltage regulator here, giving us a steady um, voltage on these pins. Uh, I'm powering my Arduino on the with the V in and the ground pins connected to the uh, terminal block here, so that's a feeding power to the Arduino board. And then I've just connected up this red wire here. I'll just explain what I've done here. I haven't got the headers yet that I want to solder into here. So I've just temporarily soldered in um, a wire onto each of the um, servo control pins. And I'm only connecting up um, the red one, which is um, my second one in. And I've got that attached to uh, through an extension lead up into one of the servos. I'm just going to try and set up one servo and it's connected to this one here. Um, and I've, I've connected that to pin 5 down here. Is that 5? Yeah, it's 5. You have to kind of trust me. Yeah, there it is. Um, so from the sketch we saw earlier uh, pin 5 is the center position. Um, I, must, I want to show you this because I've, this has held me up for ages. Uh, I've made a mistake on this. As you can see here, the servo's in the center position. And I've connected the um, servo pulley with the little notch here to the front towards the fingers. And that's wrong. Um, I couldn't figure out for the life of me for, for ages why these fingers just wouldn't work and it's be, I'm convinced it's now because this pulley is back to front the little notch here should be on this side on the opposite side of the fingers so when the cable comes around the um, braided fishing line it has to go all the way around the um, ring of the servo horn before it gets to the position where it's tied on so that when the servo rotates it it pulls the this cable, if, if it's rotating this way around, it'll pull this cable all, the long way around the um, servo horn, and this cable will, will get sort of pushed back and become slack. Um, the way I've got it, which is wrong, um, both cables are essentially sort of right next to each other, and they'll both get pulled around the same way. So they'll both get pulled tight nearly all of the time, which is why they're not working. Well, I'm convinced it's why they're not working. We'll yet to find out if it fixes the issue. So I'm going to take this servo horn off and position this notch on this side, because we've got this servo here set up on pin 5, which is the, the center position.
So that will just get the uh, servo horn in the right place. So this is the correct orientation, I believe. Um, the fingers down this end of the hand and the notch in the pulley away from the fingers to the back. I had to re-thread the wires because um, the the uh, threaded the braided fishing lines because um, turning it around meant they were crossed over and we don't want them crossed over so this is basically the setup they're running down from that center finger down through here through the wrist up through these two center holes here and then into the pulley like that and the way they work is they go through that hole in the pulley turn it over so through that hole and then from underneath they go up through the hole to the top so if I pop that on there so we're in the center position so the notch should be directly at the back it, it might not be exactly um, in the center to the back because of the splines on the um, the shaft of the servo but as long as it's kind of close enough I think that's good enough I'm just going to pop the screw back in barely tightening that um, so now I think what we could do this is my theory anyway um, if I move that uh, wire over here to a different pin it should turn this servo to either the maximum anti-clockwise or the maximum clockwise position I can't remember exactly which pin does what so I'm just gonna move that across to pin 6 Okay, so that is a fully anti-clockwise, I believe. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tighten the this one, the one that's going the long way around. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense now. You see, this cable has to go the long way around to reach this position, whereas this cable is going the short way around. It's a bit slack. So the one that's gone the long way around, we want to be tight. So I'm just going to give that a pull. I'm not. I'm not super tightening these at the moment. I might just give them a bit more tightening later. I just want to get to know that they're basically working. I'm just wrapping that around there. I'm just going to stop the camera while I tighten that screw there. Okay, so I've tightened that one there. So this cable is in, in theory is tight. I might need to redo this actually. Um, this, yeah. So that's that's not tight enough, but um, just looking at the finger down here, uh, it's in the um, open position. So in the open position, we want this cable tight. Uh, that's not tight enough, so I'm going to give that another tighten. So I'm just going to slack off this screw, give this cable a pull, and then re-tighten that screw. Okay, I've just tightened that slightly. Um, it's not super tight, there's still a little bit of slack in there. Um, but I can feel, as I start to press that, I can feel a little bit of tension in this, in the in the finger down here. So I'm going to go with that for the moment. We might need to make them even more tighter, but I'm not going to overdo anything at the moment. Um, now if I move this uh, wire back to pin 3, I believe. Okay, now that's rotated, rotated the servo. In the opposite way, um, this is now in the uh, fully clockwise position, um, and we can see that cable that we just tightened up is now really loose. If we had the springs down in here, I'm tempted to think that you really do need the springs. If we had the springs, that would have pulled that down there a little bit. Um, so now we can now we're in the fully clockwise position we can now tighten the other cable and we want to we want to tighten that when we pull that we'll see the finger come up so we want that tight when the finger's in the clock
closed position. So I'm just going to, um, we're, we're now doing this side. Um, so this one is now going all the long way around. Um, so I'm just going to wrap that wire, that cable there around this screw and tighten this up. Okay, again, it's not super tight, uh, so we might need to tighten it even more, but the finger is in the closed position. So I'm now going to switch it back to the um, position six and see if it will reopen. Which it did. Sorry, I didn't have the camera on it, but it did. That's the first time I've successfully seen a finger move. Okay, I'm going to move it back to position three and it should close again. I'll try and keep the camera on it this time. There we go, and it did close up. Okay, so now we should be able to move the um, the pin here to number 10, and I believe it will... Now move it slowly. That's following our sketch. I think what we're seeing here is these cables are not tight enough. The other thing I haven't done yet is we need to glue this knot on the end here um, on the fingertip. We need to glue that so it's it's slipping. We can see it's slipping. Okay. Well, we've had some success. So two things to do. One, we need to glue that knot. And secondly, I think we need these even tighter down at this end. Again, I think the springs would help if we installed the springs. I just don't have them. That's the only reason I haven't put them in. I'm not recommending you don't do that. And get yourself some springs and fit your springs. Um, I'm not quite sure where to get them from. Yeah. I think the springs would help just keep the tension on all the time. Just a little bit of tension. Um, I assume this operation is correct. Um, if someone could comment if they think there's anything you can do better than this. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and connect up an, another one. So we can just go through the same procedure on a different servo and we should get another, another one of the fingers moving. But with the sketch I've got in the Arduino, I can only move one at a time at the moment. We'll need a new sketch to move more than one. But I quite like this sketch because it allows me to um, set up the servos by moving the, the wire on the pins. So I'll try and set up a second one. So I just grabbed one at random and it happened to be this one, which I think is the uh, the little pinky down here. Um, now I understand the operation of these. Um, rather than having it set straight to the back, like this in the center position, I think we need to take um, the exact opposite of where the cables are going and they're kind of heading in, in this direction. So I think we want to make sure make our notch sort of in this position. Just readjust that a little. I think that's a more appropriate position for the notch on this particular one um, because it's kind of the opposite of where the the uh, cables are being pulled from. So I'll just uh, pop that screw in there. Okay, so I've just set up the pinky. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, again, I still haven't uh, glued these uh, knots yet, so we're seeing some slippage on the knots. Um, you can see it just about. So we need to sort that out. That's clearly explained in the tutorial that you should glue those knots. Um, we can see this servo here operating here. So I think we want to leave a little bit of length on these to give us something to hold on to when we pull them to tighten them. But I think we can shorten them. They're quite long at the moment. I think we can shorten them a bit. It's probably not quite tight enough. Um, and we need to sort out those knots. So I think things to glue the knot and then and then re-tighten. 
Um, I'm going to try and connect up as many of the other ones as I can, and then maybe we can uh, adjust the sketch on the Arduino. Okay, so here's the uh, updated sketch to make all of the fingers move at the same time. I'll just go over this line by line. As before, we've got our include to include the servo library. Uh, then we've got an array of integers. That's just the pin numbers that we're going to be using. Uh, then we've got an array of servo objects for the five servos. Then we have our main setup. Uh, that just gets executed once. We have a loop going from 0 to 4. And then that, inside that, just for each servo, we're uh, attaching it to the relevant pin. And then finally we have uh, pin mode 13 output, which is just the uh, internal LED, the onboard LED uh, on the Arduino is connected to pin 13. Just setting that up as an output pin. Then we have our main loop, uh, so this will get uh, repeated over and over. Uh, that's in two blocks. The top block, we're just uh, turning on the LED with the digital right 13 high. And then we have an outer loop going from 0 to 180. And that's the uh, angle on the servo the, in degrees. Um, and then the inner loop is just looping from 0 to 4 and just looping over all of the servos and setting their position to the current angle. Uh, we have a delay 5 in there. I've reduced that slightly from delay 10. That's just to speed things up a little bit. And then finally, once we've done the complete movement from 180 from 0 to 180, I've got a delay of 1 second. The second block is identical. It's just working backwards. Uh, this time we're going to do digital right 13 low to turn the LED off. And then we've got the outer loop going backwards from 180 down to 0. The inner loop is identical. It just loops over all the servos and sets them to the current angle. And we have delay 5 just to slow things down a little bit. And then finally when we're finished, another 1 second delay. So if we look at the LED, we'll see it flashing on and off. Um, not exactly one second intervals because we've got the servo movements and their delays built in as well but you'll just see the uh, LED flashing on and off I just use the LED just to let me know that the program's running so we'll see how that works with the fingers So this is a sketch running. I haven't connected up the thumb. Uh, I've got two problems with the thumb. One, it seems to be stuck. Um, it doesn't seem to want to move properly anyway. And two, I've uh, broken um, one of the screws off the servo horn. The screw head come off because I've tightened it too much. It's snapped off. So a couple of issues to sort out with the thumb. Um, the other fingers are moving. There is an issue with this finger here. It won't quite go down on its own well if you give it a little flick but comes up okay but doesn't go down properly I did notice that when I was just threading the cables through so it's nothing to do with the servos it's some kind of issue with this this joint here um, I am beginning to think it, it, it needs uh, this part this main hand part needs to be replaced because uh, I think this joint here is no good um, Fingers are basically moving. It seems like when it opens, this one opens first, and the other two just follow it a little bit after. This is a little bit odd. Um, could just be that the cables aren't tight enough. Um, the hand's basically working. Yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong with the thumb. Um, maybe there's a cable caught somewhere that's stopping it from moving. I think the joints are okay. It's something's pulling too tight on the cabling. Um, we'll probably leave it there for this video. We've, we've kind of got the hand working. We've got a couple of issues, but uh, I'll need to glue the knots on the end of the 
fingers. We could, in theory, attach the fingertips, but I'm just going to leave them off for the time being. Still need to print the covers for the hand. Um, need to repair this servo horn. The wrist does work. I haven't programmed it in this Arduino sketch, but it does work. Um, and we've got this uh, gear shaft glued on the back now. So the forearm and the hand is just about complete. So in the next video, I'm going to be trying to assemble the entire arm. We'll attach the bicep to the shoulder and attach this forearm to the bicep. Um, and we should have a, like a complete arm that we can see moving. So that's the goal for the next one. So please join us for that one. Um, if you liked the video, please uh, hit the like button. And if you haven't done some already, uh, subscribe to the channel. Really looking to build up the number of subscribers to the channel. So that would be really great if you could subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.